I started thinking about getting my first tattoo probably 15 to 20 years ago. I was deep in my yoga practice at the time, but I also had thoughts of how to about how to incorporate my UU faith. I doodled and I talked about it with friends who had tattoos, looked at some different tattoo artists' works online, and I even called a couple studios, but I just was never compelled. And then the concern with having an ohm on my body when my yoga practice was kind of in this ebb and flow stage, well, it just didn't happen. <laughs> Then, a little over five years ago, as my daughter was preparing to leave for college, I knew exactly what I wanted my first tattoo to be. It is a beautiful entwining of the moon and the sun, surrounded by the names of my husband, myself, and our children, Tegan and Nathan. I would jokingly say, my back may be the last place we are all together again. <laughs> Which, you know, has kind of panned out a little bit. <laughs> my daughter is far flung. Well, as some of you may know, one tattoo usually leads to more. <laughs> it really is such a deeply personal decision for most folks who get tattoos. They can be permanent and deep expressions of who we are, what we value, what we want to see in the world. And yes, there are silly ones too that might just be a reminder of a past better left behind. <laughs> but for me, my tattoos, even my basic white girl infinity are de definitely deep personal expressions. My family is on my back, my friends, my activist aspirations, I've got my leg here. And I knew I wanted something to represent my UU faith. Several years ago, our minister at the time delivered a sermon. I believed it was called the shortest elevator, elevator speech or something to that effect, right? Is everyone here familiar with the concept of the elevator speech? You know, it's the quick, pithy way to explain, like, what the heck is Unitarian Universalism <laughs> when people ask? This was a knockout sermon. I am sure many of us here remember it. I posted a link of this sermon onto my Facebook page. It was fantastic and illuminating, inspiring and challenging. I loved it, and it resonated with me so completely. Shortly thereafter, I knew I wanted to incorporate the shortest elevator speech in my UU tattoo. One source, many names, no one left behind. I started looking for a chalice image to accompany it, and I got permission to use my minister's words on my body art, and off to the tattoo parlor I went. So excited. And here it is, proudly displayed, just under my left collarbone. I love this tattoo and never once thought about how visible it would be. <laughs> I'm a proud UU. Okay, for those of you who don't know, I manage a popular wine bar downtown. The best wine bar downtown. <laughs> so I get to interact with all kinds of people all day long. <clears throat> and wow, people like to ask about tattoos. Especially ones with words on your chest. <laughs> like who thought? that this would be happening. I didn't even think about it. I never asked people about their tattoos. Oh boy. So I get to talk about this particular tattoo a lot. And overwhelmingly, I get one of two reactions. Either, wow, that is so beautiful, I love that. Or, oh, hmm. <laughs> like, seriously, that's what I get. And sometimes people only hear the last line and think I served in the military. But I also get questions about what does it mean? And so I have become an accidental evangelist for Unitarian Universalism. <laughs> Evangelist, evangelism, evangelicals. Man, those are supercharged words. Am I right? If you go online, which I did to prepare for today, and look up evangelical readings or stories or poems, your search results are going to be what you expect, heavily skewed with links to lots and lots and lots and lots of testimonials about Jesus Christ as our Savior. So many of us carry baggage from past churches 
or from experiences with people trying to convince us that their religion is the one way and the only way. These can be trigger words for sure. I think one problem is that we've connected and associate the word evangelize with the word proselytize, but they are not the same. Even in the basic dictionary, just like common dictionary, there's a problem. So proselytize is a verb, convert or attempt to convert someone to, from one religion, belief, or opinion to another. Evangelize, also a verb. Convert or seek to convert someone to Christianity. So our common definition is indeed problematic. But if you'll indulge my word nerdiness here for a little bit, if you go to the etymology of the words, proselytize comes from the noun proselyte, meaning a new convert, and even further back from the Latin noun proselytes, meaning stranger or alien resident. Yeah. Evangelize, <coughs> or evangelism, <coughs> excuse me, comes from the Greek evangel, one who tells good news. That's it. Evangelism is the act of telling good news. No more and no less. And that is not a bad thing at all. The Reverend Michael Quayle from the Harrisonburg Unitarian Universalist Church has some great things to say on this topic. In a sermon from 2011, he asked his congregation, how did you get here? Did someone invite you? Did you find our website and decide to visit? Were you driving by and saw the sign or the buildings and a little curious? Um, did you see a bumper sticker? that caught your interest and maybe made you want to know more? Did your search cause you to stumble across the words Unitarian Universalist and you decided to give it another look? Maybe you married into it. Maybe you were born into it. All of these are examples of evangelism. Even if you were born as a, as a UU, you had to find that it had meaning through your interactions with others or you wouldn't have stayed UU. My question here today is do we as members and friends and beloved youthful guests of the Unitarian Universalist Church in Livermore have good news to share? I assert we do. We're just wrapping up our cottage meetings as part of this year's stewardship campaign and I know in my meeting we all had so many wonderful things to say about this church, about this community, and about this denomination of ours. These words from Reverend Scott Alexander's excellent book, Salted with Fire, are, all, are so appropriate to this moment and this sentiment. In a world with so much hatred and violence, we need a religion that proclaims the inherent worth and dignity of every person. In a world with so much brutality and fear, we need a religion that seeks justice, equity, and compassion in human relations. In a world with so many persons abused and neglected, we need a religion that calls us to accept one another and encourage one another to spiritual growth. In a world with so much dogmatism and falsehood, we need a religion that challenges us to a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. In a world with so much tyranny and oppression, we need a religion that affirms the right of conscience and the use of democratic process. In a world with so much inequity and strife, we need a religion that strives toward the goal of world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all. In a world with so much environmental degradation, we need a religion that advocates respect for the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. In a world with so much uncertainty and despair, we need a religion that teaches our hearts to hope and our hands to serve. I believe we are all so profoundly happy that we found this church, this community, this place to explore and grow and raise our children and raise ourselves I know I am so very, very grateful. Now, am I a perfect evangelist all the time? No. 
things get busy and hectic down at the wine bar, and I don't always have time to get into the fullness of what my short elevator speech means to me. Sometimes all I can say is, I'm a Unitarian Universalist, this is my theology. But there are times when I do get to talk a little bit more about it, and that's lovely. Sometimes it's challenging and scary, but it's always really lovely. Even more importantly, I try to embody our UU values in my actions, how I interact with our guests, my employees, the other business owners and employees down at Blacksmith Square. I have great relationships with my regular trivia teams who have certainly learned a lot about Unitarian Universalism when I riff and talk about random things while we're playing the game. I am ever hopeful that I am a light for this beautiful, life-affirming, life-saving faith of ours. And though I am not insisting that you all go out and get a chalice tattooed on your body, <laughs> I do challenge us all to go out and evangelize in ways big and small. Embody the power of this liberal, non-creedal, warm-hearted, generous, loving, human, faithful religion into all you do and all you seek to see in the world. Amen.